Hand sewing is a super useful skill, but I don't know why, I think people of our generation have kind of been left out in learning how to sew, so I'm gonna teach you. Hello everyone, my name is Srinidhi and I believe you shouldn't have to change your body to fit your clothes. You can change your clothes to fit you. And the great tool to help you do that is hand sewing. Today we're going to cover what materials you need to get started, some basic stitches that you should learn, and then where to actually apply them on both a hem and a seam. And if you're sitting there like, what's a hem? What's a seam? That's okay. Stick around and you'll find out. Okay, first off, the materials you need can mostly be found in any basic sewing kit. And I've linked some options below, but it should include a needle, a pack of thread, and you'll want multiple colors because you need the thread to match the color of the fabric you're working with. And then you'll want some fabric scissors. Any fabric scissors should be fine as long as you don't make the mistake I did and use your fabric scissors to cut paper because it'll make your scissors blunt really quickly no matter how good of a scissors you get. Then something that's optional but I really recommend is shears. Shears look like scissors except they cut in a zigzag line and the reason for that is to prevent fabric from fraying. If you get shears, it saves you a ton of time because you don't need to manually cut in those triangles into the edge. You can just have your scissors do all the work for you. And then make sure you have some pins and of course, a seam ripper because you're gonna make mistakes. You just are, it's okay. <laughs> and then some materials which you hopefully already have are chalk, a ruler, and an iron. If you want a more detailed video on what materials I recommend, let me know and I'll make a video about it and link it up there. Now let's get started. Alright, first you're going to need to thread the needle. And how do you do that? Well, cut off your thread so that it's clean and you know, it can just go through the eye of your needle easily. If you're having any trouble, even after cutting it to a nice point, just lick the thread a little bit and it will glide right through the eye of your needle. No problem. Now pull a good amount of it through. How much depends on, you know, how much you're sewing, but for starters you should have at least a foot to two feet. And then cut off the end, fold the edge over, then tie a knot on the folded area. Now when you unfold the thread, you have a nice, big, fat knot that will not come through your fabric. Trust me, this knot has saved me so much time, so definitely use it. I just make an extra knot after that just to keep it secure. And now we're gonna start sewing. So there's three types of stitches that I'm gonna teach you today. So the first one is the one you probably think about when you hear sewing. This is the basic running stitch. A running stitch kind of just weaves in and out of the fabric like this, from front to back, front to back. So it's very simple. The problem is it's very weak, like it comes apart very easily. So what I recommend is actually that you don't do the running stitch. <laughs> Forget the running stitch. If you do it, make sure you keep the stitches very, very small. But even then, I still recommend that you do this next stitch, which is the back stitch. And the back stitch is very similar to the running stitch, except it's more secure. So first you make a stitch, just as you do with the running stitch. But then instead of continuing forward for the next stitch, you go backwards, then you go forward. So, you're making a bunch of little loops just like this. And because you're looping the fabric instead of just weaving it, it keeps it extra secure. If you look at the front of your fabric, it should look exactly the same as it did in your running stitch. However, if you turn it over to the back, you'll notice that all the stitches overlap 
and they're very tightly packed. Now that's what keeps it extra secure. Now finally, the third stitch I'm going to show you is the slip stitch. Now you use the slip stitch on a slightly different area. You use the slip stitch on the edge of fabric. So I want you to take your fabric and fold in twice. Then iron that down to keep it nice and secure. And you're going to take your thread through the fold. Then thread it through the front fabric layer. Then once again through the fold and then the front fabric layer. Keep alternating like this back and forth till you finish. Make sure that you keep the stitches through the front fabric layer very small. And the stitches that go through the fold can be a bit longer. When you finish, you're going to just tie a knot, then insert your thread back into the fold and cut it off. This prevents you from even seeing the extra thread. Turn your fabric over to the front. You should barely see the thread. It should be nicely hidden. And even on the back, it should still be nicely hidden. That's because most of the thread just goes through the fold where you can't see it. You're gonna use these stitches for different purposes. You're gonna use the back stitch when you're making a seam. And you're going to use the slip stitch when you're making a hem. If you're like, what is that? Let me show you. So a seam is just anywhere where two pieces of fabric meet. So think where the front of your shirt meets the back of your shirt. That's why on the side, you'll have a side seam. You'll also notice this seam where your shirt meets your shirt sleeve, which I don't have today, <laughs> but look at your own. Look closely at those seams. You'll notice you can't actually see the stitching from the outside. That's because all the stitches are inside. So whenever you're making a seam, you do it the same way. You start with the clothing inside out, make your basic back stitch all the way down the seam, then turn it right side out and you have a clean finished seam. If you want to see a full tutorial on how to make a seam, then let me know in the comments and I will link that for you up here. Now the next stitch, the slip stitch, is something we use on a hem. If you're like, what's a hem? So if you remember, the seam is where two pieces of fabric meet. The hem is just on a single piece of fabric, but it's on the edge. So think like where your sleeve cuts off and ends, or where your neckline ends. So we usually don't wanna have the raw edges just out because that would mean the fabric will fray and break down and wear. So what people will do is they'll fold the edge in, either once or twice, and then sew that in place. That's called a hem. So that's where you're going to use your slip stitch. So you're going to fold the edge in twice, iron it in place, and do your slip stitch. If you wanna see a full tutorial on how to make a hem, let me know in the comments and I will link that up here. So there you go, that was three basic stitches. Well, actually two, because I recommend that you forget the running stitch and mainly just stick to the back stitch and the slip stitch. But with those two stitches, you can cover so much ground. Or actually, so much clothing. <laughs> if you want some beginner projects to make use of these new skills, I have linked some up here. My favorite one, if you wear women's clothing, is extending jeans pockets because we all know women's clothing has pockets that are about this small and you can expand them to fit your hand your phone whatever else you need so go ahead and check that out i don't really believe in tutorials that are like how to make an apron how to make a pillowcase because i want something that's more practical to my day-to-day -day life so if you want to see more sewing projects that I recommend for that, then let me know in the comments. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you want more do-it-yourself fashion and tips, and I will see you next time. Bye!